Winnie Marikizela Mandela was first mentioned at Truth Commission hearings in May by the mother of child activist Stompi Saipe. Stompi was abducted and tortured by Mandela's notorious Mandela Football Club and, in the end, murdered. In Gauteng this week, parents of two Soweto youngsters named Marikizela Mandela again in connection with the disappearance of their children. It happens that my son be one of the activists with other young men in Soweto who were highly involved with uh, Mrs. Mandela. So the story in 1988, around about 10 to 8 in the evening, it was on a Sunday when I came back home, a young man by the mic of Michael called me before I entered the house. He said Winnie wanted to see me outside. And I went outside with him. The kumbi was parked in my street, not very far from my house. When I got into the kumbi, there was Mrs. Mandela Winnie with the driver Michael and other few young men which I did not recognize. My son Lolo was in the kumbi. He appeared badly beaten, his face was bruised, and he was shivering. So, Mrs. Mandela told me that she's taking Winnie away, uh, Lolo away, because they labeled him as a spy. I pleaded with Winnie for more than an hour not to take my son away, but in vain, they drove off. I went back to the house. They came back to me because he was asking for a jersey. There was this tall, hefty boy with an athlete body who was having a gun escorting my boy up to the gate. He said he must not come into the house. We must just give him a jersey. They went back into the kumbi. I also followed into, into the kumbi, knowing very well that Winnie is a friend Winnie, it's her mother. Maybe she will listen to me this time. She did not. Lolo's friend and neighbor, Sibu Sisu Shabalala, was abducted only hours later. I asked Boniso myself, what do you know about Winnie? But Boniso was one boy who was quiet, and then he said to me, Mom, I don't know that much. And I asked him, when they come here, what are you going to do? He said to me, I have to go where they've taken Lolo because if I don't go there, all of you will die here. It means that Boniso disappeared on the 14th. After two days, on the 16th, 6 o'clock, we received a telephone. When we received a telephone, the kids said to me, it's Boniso over the phone. And when I went there, he said, Mom, I'm here with Lolo and the telephone card. In 1989, we went to Mrs. Mandela with my husband. We went there to go and plead with her that she must please tell us what happened to Lolo or tell us where he is. Mrs. Mandela refused to speak to me, only spoke to my husband. Again, in the beginning of 1990, we went to Mrs. Mandel to go and plead with her again, but to no avail. The next thing, there were bodyguards harassing us, telling us not to come near the premises anymore. I know Winnie. She wasn't as bad as she is at the moment. She used to be a mother. She used to be a loving person. You'd go to Winnie with your grievances, she would help you if she can. But what has turned now, now lately, I don't know what happened to her. Nobody is above the law. If the law must be executed, let it be. And let be no favors because it's somebody else, some people are untouchable. We are still not at ease. I'm having nightmares, dreams. Sometimes I hear knocks on the door, thinking that it is Lolo. When I'm sleeping, I can see him flying from the sky, coming home, saying that, Mom, I'm back home. Then I open my arms and try to hug him and say, Welcome home. 
I am pleading with Mrs. Mandela today in front of the world that please, Mrs. Mandela, please give us our son back. Even if Lola is dead, let Mrs. Mandela Mrs. give us the remainings of our son so that we must bury him decently. Then after, maybe we can rest assured knowing that Lolo is buried here.